There's another option for a master copy this week, which is uh, replicating some of this Star Wars art from Joe Johnston. Uh, this is some of the original concept art. And mostly I want to talk about this in terms of using construction. So construction is just the act of using simple shapes to figure out how something is put together. I've got a couple of uh, medium choices here. I tend to do a drawing like this using a couple of things that are lighter in value. So this is color raised red pencil. This is just a yellow color pencil. And this is actually a marker. This is a like 30%, 20% marker. <clears throat> and what's nice about a marker is it goes on and you have to use what you put down. So if you draw with this, it basically helps avoid the sort of beginner tactic of just drawing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. And finally you trust the line at some point. So let's talk about how you can go about using construction in a drawing and some of the tips I would recommend for thinking about it. And also how this relates to perspective. So first off, let's draw without perspective, just temporarily because that can make it a lot easier. We're gonna do something called isometric drawing in which uh, lines are oftentimes parallel forever. So these three lines, they're all parallel kind of. I'm not uh, making that official, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But similarly, I can draw some lines here and lines here and they'll basically be parallel forever going this way, which makes it so that you end up with a box. Now the nice thing about drawing a box is if you put an X through any given side of this box, you will have the direct center of it. So sometimes I just map this sort of thing out because that tells me where center points are. And this can be handy for things like uh, placing the nose of your X-wing. So if I say that's right here. If I were to rough this out now, uh, I would use ellipses. Ellipse drawing is something where you should use your hand and your whole arm and try and slowly lower your hands to the page as you go. So when I draw ellipses, uh, sometimes what I like doing is throw a horizon down and just as a test to see what you understand. Imagine this is a pancake and it's coming directly at your eye. So this would be completely flat. And if you flew this pancake up in the air, it would slowly show more and more of the underside of it. Because now it's above you. Whereas when it goes down, it'll slowly like that. It's going to slowly lengthen this way. I think this is kind of important because of a beginner mistake I see a lot, which is, I think of it as the coffee cup problem. When you draw a cup of coffee, a lot of times beginners are doing this because they don't know what to draw. So they look at their kitchen counter and they think, what should I draw? Oh, there's a cup of coffee. And um, a lot of times what I see in their sketchbooks is this big oval on top and then the coffee cup comes down and then it's flat on the bottom. Here's your little handle. And the problem with this is we're losing that perspective. Uh, when things go down, um, they're going to lengthen. And so uh, what's happening here is I think people tend to draw the information and they want to see this coffee inside of the coffee cup. And so that's what's more important to them. Uh, so they end up drawing it incorrectly. But what you want to draw is the geometry, which is going to lengthen like this. And so it's going to be more round on the bottom here than up here. This is a very tall cup of coffee. And it might be even up here and you can't, don't even get to see the coffee. 
So just keep that in mind when you're drawing, because uh, uh, a lot of times, like what I hope that you guys do is you try just roughing out shapes, just freehand them, and see if you can get used to this idea that you don't have to necessarily always have a perspective grid. You don't need to use a ruler. It's really nice when you can just freehand shapes in and go from there. So regarding our X-wing, this is something where uh, <clears throat> shape drawing is really nice because we can use this trick here. And uh, I like to do this with just, uh, you could start with this like back card of the X-wing. And I would normally use like some of my finer drawing materials. Uh, but I want to make sure you guys can see my thought process beforehand. So this is sort of like the starting back of this. I can even make this a little more extreme. And uh, the nice thing about this is I can use that X formula and say, oh, look, this is going to be where the X wing starts. And so we have this body that comes forward from there. This is going to be something where if I um, now draw this coming forward a little bit. Again, the tricky part can be that uh, it's actually receding. So, I mean, I'm starting to I think, drift off the edge here, but um, what you have is this idea of like that X would tell you where this center point is. It's kind of freestyling this. And so you'd end up with this shape that's kind of here in the middle for the main body of this X wing. And then the wings come out. And something like this, where a lot of this wing is almost entirely on the side here. That's the sort of thing that I love about construction drawing is um, you start noticing those uh, changes more. So you're going to have these cylinders line up kind of in the same way. And you're basically just making everything out of these simple shapes, you know. Notice how much I'm using my arm over here. I love drawing center lines on stuff. It kind of tends to help understand how things are going to wrap around. And just like before, it's going to be one that comes down like this. So again, using a gray marker is kind of fun for this because uh, you can't necessarily go over it twice in the same time and make it darker. The way that pencil kind of gets muddier the more you go. So a lot of times I love doing my rough draft in this and then I follow it up with pencil actually. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep going with pencil. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is trying to just think through basic shapes of a cylinder, a square, or a cube, I mean, and a sphere. And if you can draw those things, you can draw anything. Uh, another way that sometimes you'll, um, I love drawing 
And he says, just draw like some sort of long line like that. And think of that as like the, uh, the start point for your ship. So just draw something like this. And then this is sort of your guiding light for everything that's going to go into this. So from here, you, know, you could do the same thing of basic shapes. And this X-Wing is going to have So this would be a nice start for something that's more orthographic. A lot of times what you can do is, once you have this rough draft in place, kind of, you can start following up with pen. So maybe at this point, I switch over here. And at this point, I might use rulers as well. My recommendation for inking something like this is try to jump around a lot. Don't necessarily commit to one area. Uh, try and get a little bit all over. The other thing that's nice about mechanical drawing with geometry is you can start making greebles. Greebles are just little details like this that help define this shape as you go. Um, for something like this where it's rounded, I might do just one little line on part of that rounding, and then I'll follow that up with all the lines that round from it. Drawing two lines parallel to each other is a really good way to add just a little visual hint of something more interesting. You know, I sometimes use a ruler, but had I my druthers, I tend to love just freehanding it as much as possible. If you draw fast, you're going to draw a straight line. I'll think of this point as something that I want referenced down here on this one as well, this little secondary laser pistol. Now you're starting to see how the pen as a secondary pass gives me a sort of chance to edit this. I don't have to take every single uh, pencil line that I put down as like uh, sacred text. I'm allowed to um, agree with it or disagree with it. Some of these I'll toss out. I'll have a good spaceship drawing. 
just something so wonderful about a beautiful machine. So even this wing, although it's a big flat thing, it technically is more shapes. It's a, it's just a really long cube, you know, it's just a cube that's been stretched to be uh, long and flat. But here's another place where you can put some greebles. You can just do something like that. And that tells us which way this form is turning in space. Occasionally I break a rule specifically because I think about this like silhouette and maybe I want to have this <clears throat> pop out in front just a little bit extra. I feel like the trick I use a lot is if you use the ruler every once in a while, it's like just enough formality that you'll buy it when everything else is freehand. Life's too short to use rulers for everything. And then you have these Boolean processes. Boolean exercise. Uh, Boolean processes are where you like take a shape out of a shape. So this is like a little rectangle cut into this otherwise roundy sort of shape. a little bit, but you know, that's all right. No two drawings are really ever going to be the same. I mean, I think the goal of a master copy, yeah, sometimes it's perfect emulation, but another thing is like, you know, can you get into that headspace of the original artist? Stuff like this. I'm gonna throw greebles like this going around. Now you know this is round. Right? Uh, another example might be I put something like this where it comes up a little bit and over. I did one kind of like that over here. Just stuff like that it really helps. You can turn this into a whole system of paneling if you want.
Here's another Boolean example. It's actually like a cylinder, but then it has this cave going inward. Sharpie. I normally try not to use Sharpies because they're acidic, so they're not necessarily good for long term stuff. But if I really want to like create the illusion that this is popping out of outer space, nice big boy like this. Just a little bit of uh, foreground versus background separation with something like this Doesn't really help a ton Outer space. Space is the place. So that's kind of my take on a master copy of an X-Wing. just to show every once in a while which way the wind is blowing on this thing. Uh, all right now it's your turn <laughs> <laughs>